So okay, it's uh, it's absurd. Uh, yeah. It's another ruse, is all it is. I, I think yeah. that honestly, these so-called relief wells uh, are being used to ultimately, the ultimate fallback will be a shaped nuclear uh, detonation down there, which is even more insane. Which we'll talk about with Chris Landau in just a couple of minutes. Uh, this man is the best of the best in terms of analytical overviews of uh, geology and and this whole petrochemical as it is nightmare hydrocarbon nightmare ultimately and all the vocs and everything else remember when they said the other day we got a break here but uh that right. methane was confirmed to be bubbling up uh three kilometers away and they said it was no relation whatsoever to this all right who believes anything bp says anymore nobody Not, nobody i don't know anybody be right back Okay, right back with you and Chris Landau. When they talk about the bubbles, by the way, there is still a, a press blackout. They're not letting the press into that area. Uh, three kilometers away, bubbles. It sounds like oh, a few bubbles. It could be a, a, a 30 or 40 yard wide area where the, it's, it's a foaming sea of bubbles. We don't know. They're not telling us. They're not about to tell us. If we can, Chris, I'd like to go down with you geologically uh, starting at a mile deep and what that subsea floor strata uh, in fact is like what the formations are like compared to land is it just the same as land but uh, underwater or is it different under the sea well it's different for every well that you draw but i i have not logged in the in the uh, gulf of mexico but Assuming it would be the same as most places, you would have layers of siltstone, layers of mudstone, layers of limestone, and alternating layers of these. Um, so when you get into the ones that are porous and usually calcareous, uh, porous sandstones, that's where you find most of your oil and gas in those zones. Right. And those are the ones that would be producing the oil. But one must remember that we are dealing with probably 30 to 50 horizons, some of them 2 inches or 6 inches thick, some 20 feet thick, and please don't picture it as one horizon of oil and gas at the bottom. When I logged on all my oil wells, I never, I came along from university with some sort of concept of a, of a single reservoir and a single uh, layer of gas above the oil. That's not how it works. You've got at least, as I've said, on a, on a well of this depth, 30 to 50 horizons of oil and gas, separate horizons, each of their, of their own pressure. And so when, you, when they talk about sealing this particular layer, I always ask, what layer? I'm always, I've been asking for the last three months for, to show us the mud logs, show us the geological logs that they did for the well, and I've yet to see any. And so I would love somebody to tell me that they have access to the geological mud logs and we can all analyze and solve the problem instantaneously. Oh, don't hold your breath. Uh, <laughs> they're not about to let that out. So yeah. it's interesting. When he talks about horizons, he's talking about, obviously, formations, layers, in which uh, each has its own particular configuration of oil and or gas. Uh, they're all different. Uh, it's like just layer after layer after layer in a sandwich. Uh, it just keeps going. Some are thicker, some are thinner. This is Correct. this is an issue of uh, the magnitude of it is is just not known by most people. And what I'm trying to get across to people, if if, if they went down thirty thousand plus feet, which is the common now, if they went down eighteen thousand feet, it's, I don't know. We do, they're not telling us. Uh, yeah. We do know that. Uh, Schlumberger, or Schlumberger as some people pronounce it, I knew one of the Schlumberger family members, but uh, they they got their engineers off just hours before. They had been having trouble with this well since last February. It was a rough well. What do you call a well that, that bucks and has trouble and, and doesn't doesn't go smoothly? Well, then you, you're dealing with a situation where you, you, you're not monitoring your mud weight. Um, they were messing around on this well, or well, the formation was very brittle and broken, and they overpressurized the well. They put in a mud density, as they call it, a mud weight, that was too dense for this well. So 
when they the, at the um, commission or the hearing on the 28th of May, they had lost thousands of barrels of mud down this well. And when it doesn't go smoothly and you're losing your drilling mud down the well, mm-hmm. that's a disaster because your formation is, is too brittle, it's too broken, and you no longer have any control on that well. And right. the only thing that's going to save you is your blowout preventer, and their blowout preventer wasn't there to save them this time. So yeah. I call it a mess. When you, yeah. when you, you must seal a well. If you start blowing out the formation and losing the mud down the well, that's when you plug and abandon that well instantly because you're just going to end up with a mess. And they didn't do it. They kept right on going. They did, and that was a stupidity deluxe. Okay, now, the, the BOP... And I didn't know this. I mean, here we think of uh, America as an oil pioneer, drilling science and all that, experts. They sent that, that original BOP to China for retrofitting and tuning up. And the, the story I read said it's common to send BOPs to China for rebuilding, reconfiguring, uh, to whatever. Uh, d- did you know this? I know nothing about those. I never dealt with them or whether they sent to China yeah. or not. All I know is that I, I read that the thing that was badly serviced and needed servicing and was leaking, and it, it seems like yeah. chaos that they was, were running a, a, yeah. a something like this with a with a blowout preventer from the local junkyard, which seems to be the case. Well, and they had sent it to China, according to the story I read, for repair right. and refurbishing which yeah. uh, I guess goes along with a lot of Chinese products these day, these days that come back here to the West. Uh, not the best of workmanship. One wonders. Uh, one wonders. All right, this is all uh, very interesting. What you're hearing from Chris Landau is, and we're working up to this, we're, we're going to do a break here again, come back with a long segment. The geology, potentially, down to 30,000 feet, not in one totality, but certainly in multiple places, has been destroyed and caved in. There are big pockets. There are probably caverns. Uh, We don't know what they look like. Chris would know. Uh, But this is a mess. This is is not something that a relief well is going to help. Uh, Chris's proposal again, which you've seen in the video at rents.com, uh, geology destroyed, new cap, won't stop seabed leaks. I'm going to relaunch that with Landau in front of it, so you'll all see it. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, they're not going to, to pull it off. Chris is proposing at least eight wells to be drilled into this shattered geology, these various horizons that have been compromised, to begin to pull the oil and gas out and keep the pressure under control. One well... One relief well, blowout number two. Be right back with Chris Landau in just a couple. Okay, back to Chris Landau. All right, so the the, the BOP lies continue. The relief wells, forget it. They, I guess, took a shot and said, well, let's go 15,000 feet. We'll get underneath all the, the damage. There's no way. Can they know for sure, Chris? There's no way to know, is there? No, the, the, the business of being underneath all the damage is, is, is a joke to begin with. If you had a car tire, again, I always use that an, an, an analogy. That's a great analogy, right. yeah. Uh, you make, say, 50 holes in the car tire, and you've got to you, you put, to connect your, your hose to blow up the tire to the, to the valve, and you start pumping air in. It doesn't matter where you pump that air in, in what section, is it the middle or the top, or whether the valve's at the top or the bottom of the tire, the 50 holes are there in the tire, and the, the, the oil, I mean, the drilling mud is just going to leak out those holes. At the moment, the oil and gas is leaking out those holes. We should be getting 17,000, uh, so I've worked out 16,682 pounds per square inch uh, pressure out of this um, well just based on a conservatively on a 17-pound mud weight. That's really? the sort of thing that I worked on on these. 10,000, 12,000 foot wells, mm-hmm. and this one's at least 18,000 feet deep. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we should probably have even, even higher. So, the, so they, they say they're reporting 6,800, and there's basically 10,000 pounds per square inch missing because that's what they had when they were drilling. So it's now missing, and it's going into the formation, 
and causing the bubbles and the oil that are coming up in the fresh okay. around so, the well. So the new cap is pushing back, and that 10,000 psi is not being exerted on the new cap. It's just it's just blowing off laterally That's into correct. the formations. Correct. Okay. All right. Now, if these if these lunatics put a shaped nuclear charge or any kind of an explosive in there, and the idea is that they've got these advanced technologies with the Pentagon is saying you can't tell the you can't let the that's a big secret that can light off and, and achieve temperatures as hot as the surface of the sun, and apparently in nano seconds or less, uh, instantly fuse everything. That's their, that's their big game plan. And that's, that's still on the table. 